Hello, it's Mr. Raps here. We are going to do next one on unit circle. And when we're going to try and find exact values when dealing with the unit circle, uh, this little chart is one handy way to do it. And so ultimately we have to come down to some memorization techniques to do it efficiently. And it's the same thought process as over and over again. And so one of the things that you'll remember that I did last year was we made this table by counting from 0 to 4. And then we uh, square rooted all these values. And then we divided by 2, all of them. Then we simplified. And so 0 over 2, the square root of 0 over 2, that just became 0. The square root of 1 over 2 is equal to 1 half. This remains the same. This remains this. The square root of 4 is 2. Divided by 2 is equal to 1. And so we now have a nice, easy way to see. We can quickly make the values that exist. The cosine gets even better. I just write them backwards. So I go 1 root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2, 1 half, and 0. And then tangent is sine over cosine we just learned. 0 divided by 1 is 0. 1 divided by 1 over 2 divided by root 3 over 2. Well, you can do the computation, but it ends up being root 3 over 3. Root 2 over 2 over 2 is 1. This one ends up being root 3. And this one is undefined when I go 1 divided by 0. And so there's lots of patterns to pick out here to help remember it. Some of the things that I do to remember, I have my degrees and radians. And I know that there's always like matching pairs. And in all trigonometry, things always seem to match back and forth. I know that 3s and 6s go together. Okay, so a 30 degree angle means there's a pi by 6. A 60 degree angle means there's a pi by 3. 45, I just have to remember, that's pi by 4, and this one too, I happen to remember that one fairly easily too, and I'm not sure exactly why I remember it so easily. The other thing that I'll tell you is this one here is pretty much the only one that I remember. I know this one, and so that means I know if this was sine of pi by 3, or cosine of pi by 3, then this one is opposite, it, so it's 30 and it's sine. If this is a half for 60, well then it's root 3 over 2 for 30. And so there's a lot of similarity because these are the same, those are the same, and it's the same kind of pair back and forth. Um, and so knowing this table is actually quite handy. And then the last kind of memory trip trick I'll try and tell you is most of my things I think in radians, here's a pi by 6, 3 and 3 add up to 6. This is a 3, and so that 3 is just a 3. And so that's how my quick little memory trick to help me remember which ones belong with which one. Um, not that they're, they're not mathematical little memories, it's just like uh, little tricks to the trade. So knowing this table will be quite handy, especially when we do things like this. Using the unit circle and special triangles, or the table, or I could say or table, find the value of the following, okay? So the first, I'm going to find the value of sine 4 pi by 3. In order to do it, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rough sketch. And I know in my rough sketch there's going to be my unit circle. My unit circle. And 4 pi by 3, well, I know that pi, a single pi, is 180 degrees, or that's up to here. And this is just 3 pi by 3 is 1 pi, so it's 1 more pi by 3. I'm going to go 1, so basically I'm, in my head, I quite quickly am able to go, it is this calculation. It's one more pi by three. I don't actually care really carefully where it is. I just care about which quadrant it's going to fall into. And because it's just pi by three more than pi, it's going to be in this quadrant here. Okay? And so this here, little uh, theta, that theta there is my reference angle. 
Okay, and so I know that's pi, and so I'm going to go one more pi by three. So my reference angle is actually pi by three. And so then I think, so I have my rough sketch, my reference angle, the trig value of sine of pi by three. Well, sine of pi by three is root three over two. So I can say it is root three over two. And then I have to think about, well, is it positive or negative? Well, sine is the y value. When I go over x and down y, I go down, and so it is negative square root three over two. And so there is how we calculate the exact values from a unit circle. We go through all four of these steps, and it's the same questions we do each time, and the more often you do it, the more efficient you'll be at it. Now, you're always gonna have your calculator, and if you put this into your calculator, you get negative 8660. And so if you use your calculator, you should be able to go through these two uh, conversions back and forth. And just because if this comes up, you should recognize that as root 3 over 2. Okay, we'll do another quick example here. Cosine 2 pi by 3. Well, I'm going to draw a quick sketch. I'm going to go 2 pi by 3. Well, 3 pi by 3 we know is pi. It's 1 less than that. So I'm going to be over here where again this is my reference angle. And my reference angle is going to be pi by 3 because it's 1 less. And it's always going to be in radians. This is always going to be my reference angle. If it was 5 pi by 6, well pi by 6 is the reference angle. Okay, If it was like 3 pi by 4, well then pi by 4 is the reference angle. And so it's actually quite easy in radians to pick out what the reference angles are. So my reference angle is pi by 3. Cosine of pi by 3. Cosine of pi by 3 is 1 half. That's the one I know best. I just So that is going to be equal to 1 half. And now I ask myself, is it positive or negative? Well, cosine is x. I have to go over here. At this point, over here, that is a negative value, and so it is negative one half is the final answer. All right, I'm going to do one more together here. So tangent 11 pi by 6. Well, 11 pi by 6, well, I know 2 pi is all the way around the circle. And in terms of pi by 6, 12 pi by 6 is equal to 2 pi. So I'm not quite at 2 pi. I'm a pi by 6 short. So that means I'm down here. And do I care exactly where it is? No. I just know it's going to be here. And so this little angle here, this reference angle, is a pi by 6. I'm short that. And again, it's always below. It's whatever the, the bottom is. And so now tangent 11 pi by 6, I go to my table. And I know it's going to be root 3 over 3. They add up to 6 is my memory tool. I get pi by 6, and so it's going to be tangent of this is going to be root 3 over 3. And now I have to think about the positive and negative. I know it's sine, which is negative, over cosine, which is positive. Put them together, and you get a negative. So tangent 11 pi by 6 is root 3 over 3. So these four steps you'll always go through. And you'll get really quite good at doing positive and negatives because it's always the same. So if we think about positives and negatives, if I'm here, right, this is positive and this one is positive. So this is cosine and this is sine and tangent is this over this. So they are all, all are positive. Okay, when I'm in this quadrant, okay, this this value is positive, and that is the sine value, because that's y. Cosine is negative, and this is positive, and so the sine is positive. Cosine is negative, tangent being plus over to, is negative. Going here, this is cosine is negative, sine is negative, and so sine is negative, cosine is negative, but tangent Tangent is positive. And finally, this last one here, we have positive cosine. 
negative sine, and so tangent is also going to be negative, and so cosine is positive. And so here's another memory technique. So all students take calculus to help remember which ones are positive. It's in this quadrant's cosine, or you could think of it as the cast rule, C A S T. However you want to do it, but this is another quick mnemonic device to remember which ones are positive and which ones are negative. But they all come from the unit circle with this being cosine theta, sine theta being the coordinate. So we can get the sines, positives, and negatives based upon this concept as well.